So, as I said before, we're going to see uh, an app, IoT application. How to push data, sensor data, okay, to Google Sheet using Node MCU, okay, basically through the internet. So in this uh, application is quite useful if you know if you need a wireless uh, measurement. And um, I will show you uh, the research example which uh, I've been uh, okay running up until now so okay we have gone through basically the lesson learning lesson plan uh, we're going to cover six modules and then in the beginning we're going to see the the, the concept or the overview of the mcu and then you have to to, to capture the the important facts because uh, we're going to uh, uh, review that in e-learning, we show you uh, at uh, where you can basically quiz, uh, quick quiz, 23 question, uh, objective. So you can do it later to measure the understanding, your understanding on on the topics on the or the training today. <clears throat> so um, I welcome to your your basically participation. If you have any question, uh, you can. Quickly ask, no, don't worry, uh, and, and then uh, try to, you know, uh, going one by one, okay, later. All right, so we have here our uh, Node MCU overview. So, Node MCU, it, uh, basically, okay, uh, that was developed under the community of open source hardware and so, uh, software. So it is uh, based on open, okay, open, open platform or, or open source. And uh, if you look at the internet, there will there are a lot of um, you know communities like GitHub. Uh, a lot of developers are exchanging ideas on how to okay, use the Node MCU. Uh, but basically, if you look at the Node MCU, there is a ESP8266 module. So that is actually a Wi-Fi module. So you can buy it separately. It, 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 a ESP8266 module. So it is a, a Wi-Fi module that you can use to connect with the internet and do some application. Uh, so ESP A two six has become popular, but the, the issue is that the initial programming was complex, and uh, you need to have to be an expert to program the ESP A two six six. So the, the the developer in two thousand fourteen, basically in two thousand fourteen. They build up, okay, this node MCU, and then on the top there has ESP A two six six. So the word node MCU means that node microcontroller unit, okay, microcontroller. So the the birth of uh, this node MCU, so they are microcontroller together with this. ESP8266 so it can connect to the internet so they're basically uh, the antenna, flat antenna. So uh, the, the, since 2014 so it has you know uh, release and growth and if you look at the internet there are a lot of open source firmware and development platforms. You can find many applications uh, even <coughs> you can uh, um, can find people who are expert and exchange information and knowledge. So, so the the, the not MCU, uh, some of the points that we can see that why we prefer not MCU 
it can be easily integrated with uh, many kind of so sensors. Uh, so we 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 don't we don't need uh, so users can connect and use the sensor without uh, have to think about the intricate intricate setup procedures. So you just need the uh, it come with the function put together and do some okay testing and then comp uh, coding compiling you get <coughs> okay you get the output so it can uh, the MCU can uh, design to support wide range of sensor uh, for IoT in this case the HT11 or 22 so some of you may get the HT11 or 22 doesn't matter uh, uh, the only things different is the pin configuration and some some coding uh, uh, declaration so that we're going to go through that and other most uh, sensor like say uh, low motion sensor um, and a light sensor and so on and that's why this uh, uh, developed to be as a unified interface so this standardized the the process of interfacing for sensors so this you, when we want to integrate although from different manufacturer uh, different uh, manufacturers so but we the coding or the process can be the same okay, so it means the, the interchangeability is easy And then it's uh, one of the best one is the cost is, is effective. Uh, so um, almost everyone can can afford uh, to uh, access the use of Node MCU and use it to integrate with uh, other low cost sensor or affordable sensors. Uh, and then. Uh, mm -hmm. The but they offer very development environment and they support uh, popular programming language like Lua. Lua is it's like uh, it's, uh, different languages like to Java or PHP, which doesn't need uh, compilation. So basically, they are interpreted. But for uh, Arduino C++, but Arduino basically use C++. So C++, we have to, uh, they have compiler, uh, translate the language into machine code. And then run the instruction on the hardware. So it, it can also be used uh, uh, under JavaScript, uh, similar to JavaScript or to Arduino, so it's C++. And then uh, it can provide uh, real time, okay, real time data retrieval from our sensor, so that uh, we can monitor our, okay, uh, let's say our some uh, room which is remote, and then we can uh, see the data anywhere in the world where we can access the internet. Other than that, uh, it is wide range, uh, wide application range. Okay, it can be, it can integrate many kind of sensors together, and also there are uh, good community supports. Uh, when you use you know, MCU development, you can GitHub, for example, for instance, uh, or you go to the other community support for programming. They have a lot of people are working the, on the same module. Now, okay, do you, do you have your, okay, with you, not MCU? So, I, here I have a version uh, 1.0. Do you have the same? Or you, anyone have uh, one, uh, 0 0.9? Big, 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 I think that's a larger one or same? Okay, larger one. So this is, uh, you see the version? Mm. 
This is zero, zero, uh, yeah, it's okay. The small, okay, you can see that the version either 0 0.1 or 1.0. Uh. Yeah, the small one is 1.0. 1.0, the, the big one is 0 0.9, doesn't matter. Same, the same thing, <laughs> only a, a, a bit bigger size. Okay. So just uh, uh, you need later we see the configuration need to be very a bit careful. So the pin out, okay, basically there are seven pin out that is very important. Okay, the first one is the power V in, V in and ground. But of, I know that today you giving the power from the USB. So in other case. Okay, you may give external power, let's say from solar charger. Okay, you can give the solar charger input to V in and ground. But be careful, the uh, actually the board, the whole board is run. Okay, run under five volt. Uh, basically, three point three volt. So what happen? All the the input here will go through the regulator IC. So we input, if you can, just below 3.3, .3, like 5 volt. 12 volt is also a bit concerning. Huh? So that's why you have to, uh, our management later, but in this is, this is for programming. You don't need to worry much because USB or 5 volt. Coming in 5 volt. So the power actually, the V in is connected also to the V in. Okay, so basically we are giving 5 volt into the board and then this voltage regulator it change the, the, the okay, the, or the regulate the, the voltage output to 3.3 .3 volts. And then we have uh, digital pins, GPIO, the digital pins or, or the call as GPIO, general purpose input and output, GPIO. So D0, D1, D2, D4, D5, D6, D7. Then we have analog pin. Only one analog input here. So it means that it has only one ADC. But if, uh, if you need to measure a lot of uh, analog input, you have to use multiplexer or switch. But you only can convert one digital uh, input or output. But uh, there are many as uh, uh, analog input or output. But there are many digital input. And then uh, there are TX and RX. Uh, which part is TX and RX? TX, TX, RX. So that's for UART. Universal A synchronous receiver transmitter communication pin, and then also we have SDA SCL. This is for I to C, but we are not going to use that. But some sensor they are or uh, some module they are communicating using I to C. But uh, in this application, just one uh, digital pin where the data come into serial uh, serial communication. So there are other pin like D3 and D4 can be used for flash and, and D4, uh, D, so D4 also you can check for the general uh, uh, special purpose. <coughs> then we have ground, ground there are multiple port uh, pin that we can use, ground here, also ground, also this is 3.3 volt. This 3.3 volt ground, same, same. Uh, actually, all they are connected to the same, like 3.3 and then 3.3 here, 3.3 are the same nodes or point. And then we have reset, okay, reset button to reset the uh, node MCU. Yeah. <clears throat> Right, so now we go to the setup. Uh, so, make sure that you have internet. Eh? Okay. 
Now the first thing is you, you need to do is to download the Arduino IDE. Uh, okay, have you downloaded the Arduino IDE? Then then uh, choose according okay, to your Windows or operating. Same IDE as Arduino, no? Okay, so maybe when you open, you see something blank. Eh? Okay, don't worry. So all okay, okay. Have download. Okay, so next, you need to install the library for Node MCU bot. Okay, you go open, open the Arduino IDE and go to preferences. Go to preferences okay. and then you copy this. The, you have the slide that I have given to you. You copy this and then paste it here. Your, your, your preferences, you paste that additional. Uh, board manager URL additional board URL you paste there then you go to tools okay and then uh, where what should you code you go to go to tools okay board okay go to board manager okay find esp okay esp esp 8266 okay i already installed okay done that part good Okay, so next you have to connect physically to your non MCU. Okay. Go to non MCU USB to select board and then select your board type. Okay. Tools, board, yeah, board, uh, board here. Okay, I choose one point zero ESP twelve E module. So you should get the at the bottom here. Okay, some connected to which com. Mine is connected to COM3. See your port COM3. Choose COM3. You guys okay? Okay. So you should get that notification port should appear automatically. Your board should automatically appear. So, okay, done that part, selecting and then the COM port. The next part is we want to test the uh, okay whether our board is working or not. What we're going to do is to turn on and off the blue light. So there is a blue light on board. Okay, if you go to the codes, the uh, Google Drive, there is a part of codes. And then you can copy the code. Yeah. 
Okay, you can you, you can copy the code and then just paste on on the IDE. Okay, so you you can try uh you can test this. Okay, verify. You could perform. Just verify first. Okay, verify if the verification is okay. So there will be. It will prompt. Okay. Something will be prompt out. Yeah, like this. But don't worry who are there. Okay, if you're done, compile, you can. Next, you can upload. Sketch and then you upload. So it will take some time. You try upload. But anyway, you should get something like mine. Okay, it's blinking every one second. Okay. Okay, so we have to move on. Okay, uh, mine is already done. So the we have proof. Okay, that the code okay run the program and then do the blinking, the blinking process. So we have to move on to the next uh, module, which is the humidity and temperature measuring sensor. Okay. While you are at it, okay, let me uh, explain. So this is one example of node MCU where it integrate with many kind of uh, sensors. So for instance, the two DHT. Because this DHT sensors uh, is used to measure the inside and outside temperature and humidity of uh, the beehive. Then it has a load cell okay, measuring the weight of the hive. And then there are other um, sensors here, which is a uh, bee count. Okay, we use uh, sense a uh, uh, pair of infrared sensors. Then we use uh, the logic, and then the output is sensed by the node MCU. Okay. Then uh, the data is all pushed to Firebase. Uh, Firebase, which is, uh, then uh, using web app application or Android, we can see the data but today okay, we simplify simplify the application only use dh one dht and using uh, google sheet you can uh, read okay uh, further uh, this uh, work on wireless thing is the hive monitoring system okay so how many of you have the blue one Okay, one, two, and how many have the uh, white one? Okay, so they are both DHT, which is uh, temperature and humidity relative, uh, relative humidity sensor, but uh, this one is the latter version of this. It, which one is used? This is the latest one. But anyway, it's good. You see the, the pin is different. You look at the board. For blue one, this is the VCC, data and ground. Data is in the center. For, for this one, uh, I think uh, the data, uh, the, the, the board uh, missing. Uh, this is the data uh, on the right. VCC in the center and ground on the left. Okay, on the left. So be careful when later we're going to uh, configure. 
so it is actually a, a module dht22 is a combination of relative humidity sensor and temperature sensor um, and that is it is combined together to measure both uh, param uh, environmental fa parameters So uh, it has uh, usually it has three or four. Uh, usually uh, on the on the sensor itself has three pins, but uh, the output here three, three pins because uh, four pins on uh, on on the casing here. You see there are three pins, one, two, three, four pin, pin, pins. But on the board they will they will use only three pins to connect to the not not MCU. So those are the specification. You see, see the power, not more than three point three volt. Eh. Okay, and then the data will okay transfer through non MCU and DHT, and then the ground. So the has two main components. The first is measuring the humidity is basically based on capacitive, okay, capacitive sensor. So it has two electrodes and then in the center there are insulator which is sensitive to the humidity. So when the humidity increase, basically conductivity increase or resistance go down. Or the resistor, total resistance. <coughs> so it, it is sensitive to humidity. But the, the thing is that the, the curve is non-linear. And there's another 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 part where uh, the component to measure the temperature, which is the NTC uh, looks like this no NTC a thermistor. Yeah. Huh? Negative <laughs> temperature coefficient. You remember NTC in our class? Uh, or we have uh, discussed on working principle on NTC, basically the resistance of the uh, sensor. Decrease as the sensor increase. NTC is good to measure very small resolution. So both, basically, be this both uh, capacitive sensor to measure the humidity and the thermistor to measure the temperature is combined together, uh, connect together to a eight bit microcontroller. You cannot see at the back. Actually, it is at the back. At the, uh, here, if you open the casing, you see this. At the back, there is a 8-bit microcontroller that measure the analog output. Eh? This two sensor, the original output convert environment parameter into analog, and then that analog is connected to the 8-bit, and then that it measure, or uh, and then uh, then then it convert into the data, k okay, data, series data. Uh, Series, series uh, that uh, protocol with pulses sent to the microcontroller. So the thing is that when using this sensor, you you have to give some interval, okay, like one second minimum, but save five second minimum before you make another measurement, because the data sent between the DHT to microcontroller is in the form of digital signal pulse pulses of digital signal like rs232 so the data is sent pulse by pulse so need some time to convert for the convert uh, the the information okay both temperature and humidity data is sent into the digital signal in pulse pulses to the microcontroller so you need to convert the data one by one i mean uh, it, it, it need to convert Okay, it, it receive the information, set, uh, get the binary value, and then convert the data. So it need some conversion time. So when using DHT22, you need to consider giving some um, <coughs> delay. All right. Now let's go to the interface. Okay, so uh, you see, uh, if you have 
DHT11 though those are the pin out but DHT22 these are the pin out be careful if you wrongly connect it will become hot okay now uh, connect uh, try to connect my uh, we are connecting to D6 to okay D6 uh, that data to D6 pin into the okay data point data okay, connect to the D6 and then connect 3.3 volt yeah VCC to 3.3 volt and ground to ground but you have to be careful if you will use DHT11, these are okay. Mine only have 3 volt. I was ah, 3 volt. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. 3 volt. Yeah. You have connect? Yeah. Right. Okay, next. Uh, you will need to 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 download the library. Uh, there are two ways how to download the library. First one, we we get all the library from Adafruit. We go to the GitHub. But I I prefer if you go to the sketch, include library, manage library, search for the HT sensor library. And then install. Sketch. Okay, sketch. Okay. Sketch. Include library. Then we will go this manage library manager here. Find the HT uh, search for the HT sensor library. And then install. Sometimes you will get this prompt. You say that the library the HC sensor needs some other library dependency currently not installed. Other food, you know? yes, install all. Do you get this prompt? Yeah. If you get this prompt, install all. If you don't get that prompt, you also need to search for other fruit unified sensor <laughs> and then install. But usually you will get this prompt. Okay, you, you search for DHT sensor library install and then you get this. You try. Got? If you got that, now uh, go to the uh, Google uh, document. Google doc, uh, Google document uh, link link. And go, find the code for DHT22 serial monitoring. Uh, serial monitoring, sorry? Yes. And then we upload. And then you can paste. You paste that. Now, um, be, uh, the, the thing is that uh, it like my I are using uh, DHT twenty two. So if you use DHT eleven, change to the DHT eleven. I usually don't. Okay, now is mine is done uploading. You may not see anything, but you go to tools. We go to serial monitoring. Okay. See at the serial monitoring, you get this output. So the code actually, okay, they have in this initialization process, uh, define the pin number and then uh, define the DHT variable, then the setup, okay, and then this is the code where it run in loops. So you see, I put there two seconds. 
so, wait for the sensor to you know, but it, it looks like faster okay, give 2 seconds and then here so it will fetch the data from the sensor so there are two if else the first if if the function is this is called uh, call function is non temperature is, or uh, and then is non temperature uh, humidity which means that if it return not a number none none is none not a number so means that it return something gibberish now it's measuring 56.2 percent 22.3 so to check whether this is working or not so I bring my hair dryer. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong way. Not too fast. You see, what is the temperature? Okay, 25. 27, slowly increase, 29, 31, 34, okay. So have you done successfully connect? Alright. Yes, have respond time. You cannot expect that give input suddenly change. It has respond time. Eh? Uh, so now you see respond time uh, concept. Still going down. Still not. You want to try? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to go to your Google Drive. Okay, pick, pick, pick an account. Eh? Okay, like. Okay, uh, pick um, your go to your Google Drive. Okay, go to Google Drive and then create. You can directly create the Google Sheet, but better, better you create uh, create a, a folder. Okay, like okay, create a new folder. IOT underscore application uh, whatever whatever you like uh, the, the name that uh, you familiar or you prefer then uh, you create the folder uh, so later if you want to find it uh, quickly you can go to the organize and then add star so later if you open here you go to star okay you can see this is the folder that you star okay then here you can open there and then new okay google sheet create a new google sheet okay and then you name whatever uh, like dht32 uh, oops sensor Data, the name, the name, eh? Okay, so create okay, the name, like for instance, okay, like, like just now I did DHT 22 data, this one is 22 uh, 11 data, then you look at the uh, URL. So these are the link to the to the Google Sheet, but this one, the highlighted part here. So this is your Sheet ID, Google Sheet ID. So what you can do, you you copy that and then, uh, for example, you copy that Google Sheet ID. Okay, in this one, this is the Google Sheet ID. Oh, sorry. Okay, this is the Google Sheet ID. Okay, 
Jadi kopi. And then paste here. Like, then this is Google Sheet ID. Just leave it there. Google Sheet ID. Okay. So you, you you have okay. Copy your Google Sheet ID. Next. Okay. Now you go to the app script. Go to app script editor. Or sometimes, it okay, depend on the version of your Google Sheet. The 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 app script is under the extension uh, menu. Um. Uh, it's Google Sheets, Yeah. But, be, uh, like mine here, extension, there is an app script here. Do you see that, app script? But, uh, uh, but I forgot to let tell you to, to do this okay uh, you we going to use four columns a b c d can you write down column a on the top date and then time temperature humidity so here date Time Temperature Humidity Okay uh, Are you okay? Yes Can find Google Sheet Go to Google Drive Yeah, this is Google Drive No, 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 you, you just New Ah, ah, Google Sheet there. Yep. And then next, you copy the Google Sheet ID. Google Sheet ID after this uh, D slash, uh, then 1SJ. Mine is until this, until here, XG. That is the Google Sheet ID. Copy that. Put it somewhere. Put on the text somewhere. Okay, then next, next go to app script, app script maybe go under tools or maybe under extension, depend on the, but I think the latest one is under extension. App script? Yeah, extension, app script, click that. Then you will see this, and then your the, the, the title of your your Google Sheet. For example, okay, extension, app script. Okay. Hang on, wait it until it uh, load. Okay, then give the same name. Same name. Mine is that copy dash two sensor data. Mine, and then give the same name. Same name as your Google Sheet. Rename. Okay, this is on the app script. <clears throat> then you go to okay, go go to Google Drive. Um, the resources, all the resources. Find the app script codes number three here.
Okay, can you can you find the quote? Can you go? This is F script open. Okay, copy all this and paste. Copy all this. Yeah. And this? Let me let me do this, Alex. No, sorry. Uh. Uh, do you manage to copy the code? Yes. Hang on. Sorry? Different code than we No, it doesn't have bar or whatever. No, bar. No, bar. No, Control all. You copy the codes and paste. Yeah. Do you get? Can you manage? No. Who has problem? App script number three. Number three. Three, three, three. Ah, yes. One there. But maybe you have to download it first. Uh, can you copy directly there? No, no, no. Not, not on, on IDE. Co copy on the app script. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, copy here. Uh, but first rename. Rename here, same with your Google Sheet. DHT11 data. No, no, must be the same. Yeah, must be the same. Okay? Now, there are two parts here on the Google Sheet ID where you have to change. I think uh, uh, two parts or one part. Let's see. Okay, got it. You have to paste your Google Sheet ID here. Okay. So your Google Sheet ID here. And then paste here. Paste. Is that done? Okay, next uh, we do deploy your Hang on, hang on. We wait for everyone. <laughs> 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 
So all the data later will come from uh, IDE, we call the program dot MCU, and this M script will write the data on your uh, Google Sheet. So the temperature in reach will be written on column C. Here temperature will be written on column C and the uh, sorry, uh, this is supposed to be temperature and this is supposed to be humidity. There's a typo error here. For, for, so if you go to the Google script, okay, here is temperature written in column C and humidity written on column D. But you need to paste your Google Sheet ID. And then the name must be the same. Okay? Yes. yes. Okay, then we go have to go next. Then you have to deploy. You click deploy new deployment. And then select type web app. Deploy, new deployment, okay, select type web app. Uh, description, you can type testing or uh, testing, it's okay, testing DHT data. Okay, then uh, this is the email that you choose, and here you have to allow any uh, anyone because you're going to give uh, Arduino. IDE access okay, to the Google Sheet through uh, app script. So this that's because that's why you have to put anyone. Okay, and then deploy. So the updating the deployment. Yes. Then you have okay, the, okay new, new deployment. Then you have to authorize, okay, authorize uh, that okay, using okay yourself. Okay, authorize. Okay, then you choose your account. Okay. okay, allow. Allow. Let it let it allow to use. Then you see this uh, web URL. Okay, and okay. Then you copy this web URL. Copy. And then put it somewhere. Okay, I prefer to put it here. Another one. Put it here. Uh, hmm. And words or notes? Notes, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, words, notes, no problem. Okay, so we, basically we have done okay, that part on the Google Sheet. So. And then it's done. Uh, here we have done. Okay, so I click done. Done, done. Click done. Now we are moving to the last part, which is setting the IoT in the Arduino codes. Setting the Arduino, so it will fetch the DHT data and then push. 
okay, to the uh, do we know? But before that, okay, so you need. I want to explain the definition and element of IoT. So IoT, Internet of Things, is a network of physical objects that use sensor and application program interfaces (APIs) to connect and exchange data over the internet. So API, okay, is basically is a connection between computer or computer so in our case is machine to machine which is okay the Arduino to Google Sheet the cloud so those are the actually like like app script is a part of API okay and then in the IDE there are a lot of APIs okay and the object is basically the node MCU the DHT22, those are the objects. And uh, type of network, well, we are basically using Wi-Fi and mobile network. Watch out, well, mobile, uh, Wi-Fi means that from the node MCU to our personal hotspot. Uh, personal hotspot and then to the internet. Physical object is the Things that tangible in the process, which is the hardware, not MCU, DHC22, even us, we also consider as the object, human also of the object, because from like if you use any, any application, you are giving information data, you are also the part of the object in Internet of Things. Okay, and then the sensor, since it's a physical uh, device that change or convert physical, okay physical or environmental data into electrical signals eh? okay and this in this case what are the sensors involved the HT22 is not the sensor what what were the sensor I explain uh, it's inside the yeah what are what, what were the sensors NTC 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 thermistor yeah and then basically a capacitive sensor capacity uh, humidity sensitive capacitive sensor okay, humidity so DHT, is the DHT is the name of the package yeah. uh, you can name anything you can combine 10 sensor and then you see wabula 101 it's up to you uh. <laughs> okay. okay so api is the communication uh, is, is, it, 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 it acts like a middle uh, man I can connect between uh, process to process like um, finance API like uh, third party when you buy something from uh, electronic market eh? then you want to make payment eh? you want, want to make payment that payment is provided by S FPX FPX is the API it is the middleman uh, the medium that connects between the payment with the vendor and customer so those are API. So we have seen some API so we are playing around today. Okay. Okay. Now we come back to here, and then we have the uh, copy the web URL. Next, go to the last set of uh, codes. Last set of codes. In the web or uh, in the Google Drive, go to the Google Drive uh, resources. Um, go to the Google Drive resources and find number four the DHT 22 notes here. All here, you copy all copy and then. Paste on the IDE. Number four, sir. Yeah, number four. And then you you paste on the IDE okay. Okay. 
Can you paste? Like this one, I have already paste. The, but there are several important part here. The first one is the your hotspot ID and password. Uh, this is mine. Okay, uh, do you have your own hotspot? Yes. Find the access ID and then the password you put there. Don't change. Don't don't change anything. Okay, so first you change. Okay, in, in the in the code, you change the SSID, and then the password. So this basically will set okay the ID or for your white uh, uh, your personal uh, hotspot. And then uh, this number 15 line, so this will determine the interval, how, uh, I mean, uh, the, how fast, okay, how long the interval you want to be. Like this example, one is one minute, not 15 minutes. So just know that. So if you change to 15, means that 15 minutes. So here, if you change to 15, means that 15 minutes, but actually one means that one minute. Every one minute, okay, the uh, node MCU will collect the data from DH2 and push the data to the Google Sheet. But provided that uh, the connection is successful. And then um, this, this function, it's just to explain uh, to uh, calling the uh, or calling the data from the DHT eleven. Don't change anything yet there. But here you have to paste your web URL. You have to paste your web URL. At, there are two two uh, here and here. First is the okay guess I uh, ID guess ID and then then here the URL here so usually the guess ID here and then paste it here okay uh, I give you an example. So you need to change this and also this don't alter anything else so the, this is our URL eh? so this is our URL so our URL that we copy is basically the uh, Google Sheet ID so you copy the Google Sheet ID here copy Then go to the code. Okay, paste here. Paste. And here. Okay. String gas ID. Don't, don't change anything else. Okay, and then paste. You are. You are, okay. Actually, the URL contains your Google Sheet ID. Just copy the Google Sheet ID and then paste to that location I have shown. Here and here. Don't change anything. Leave it. This is like this one, I'll just leave it. Okay, so can you try compile and upload? So you should see the data coming. So let me also try. 
Yeah, now it is compiling. Okay. This measuring. If you look at the serial monitor, okay, you can see. But after one minute, it will try to push the data. <laughs> Connecting request sent. Okay, now supposed to have sent the request, and it may have some lag. Okay, now it's already up here. Okay, so you can see the process at the serial monitor, and if everything is okay, you give the correct. The correct SSID and uh, uh, your your yeah hotspot ID password, and then the yeah. Google Sheet ID. If you correct, it will send to the Google Sheet. Right. So that, well, let's see and then verify. <laughs> Uh, it's coming, eh? So every loop, every loop uh, takes about uh, two seconds, but after one minute, it will send to the Google Sheet. Okay, measurement takes about two seconds, every two seconds, but data will let's play around with. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right.